G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to go over all about the uh, rear setup I've got in my Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series, why I chose it and how I went about putting it in. So uh, stay tuned and let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so let's start with the most obvious. As you can see straight up, we've removed those third row rear seats in the back of the cruiser. We've put in this draw system here. So this draw system is built by Custom Installations, which is in Wangara in Perth, Western Australia. Um, just before we start, I'll let you know I don't have any affiliation with Customs and I did pay full retail price for these drawers. Uh, I chose them because I like them, hence why they're in our cruiser. So you can see here that I've gone for the one draw setup. So this has got one draw here on the passenger side of the car, and we've gone for a simple fridge slide and table in the right hand side. And the reason I've done that is I've just wanted the fridge down nice and low so I didn't have to put it onto a drop down fridge slide. So two reasons there for not getting a drop down fridge slide. The first one is price, they are quite expensive. This is another thing to add to your build and something I didn't really wanna to have to add. The second one there is that those drop down fridge slides do take up a little bit of room either side and it's just going to impede more and more onto the storage space you have above the drawers and it's just something I didn't really need or want. So when getting these drawers from Customs, they are fully customizable, hence the name. So when you speak with Chris down at Custom Installations, you can get anything you want added, modified, adjusted, whatever you need to this drawer system. So I didn't go too out, all out there, I just went for a fairly stock standard system. The only thing I did do is I went from a Engel 6 litre fridge to a Waco 60 litre, and then Chris there makes that gap in there built for the fridge that you have. So it maximizes that space and gives you the biggest drawer size you can to go next to it. And the reason I went from an Engel 6 litre down to a Waco is the size of the footprint of the fridge. So although they're both similar size in capacity in the fridge compartment, the Waco here is a lot narrower and taller. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get your stuff out, but it does mean it takes up less of a footprint on the drawers and it gives you the biggest size drawer you can have here on the passenger side. You can imagine if I have a wider fridge in the, uh, like the Engel, it would still start from this point here, but it would come over and just take a little bit more of this drawer out. So these drawers are all made of plywood. They're a wooden construction, and then they have rollers for each of these slides. It's all high quality stuff, and so far I've been using it for about eight months now. I've had no issues. Nothing's broken or gone wrong, and real happy with their construction and the way they work. So why did I choose custom installations for this build? So I've had a couple of different brands over the last four wheel drives, including Black Widow, which is now known as RV Storage Solutions, and my last set were a set of drifter drawers. Now there's nothing wrong with either of those sets of drawers, and they both did their job really, really well. But I do like the fact that Chris down in uh, Wangara, he can customize them to however you like them. So he can add, modify, chop and change, dimensions, whatever you need, he can make it work and obviously they're a good set of drawers and uh, not only they look good but he's also able to incorporate those wing kits into the side as well which we'll go into a bit more detail in a moment. Now with this setup I deliberately chose not to go with any sort of dividing barriers, top shelves or cargo barriers. Now I know cargo barriers are normally seen as a safety thing and it's uh, pretty important to have in your car but the way in which we set up our car there's not many loose objects especially small objects that are going to fit between the roof and the rear seat in the back of our car. As those who watch my channel may know, we do tow a caravan, so a lot of our equipment that we go away with is stored inside the van. And what we have in here is large bulky items or soft items that aren't really gonna pose a risk to the passengers inside the car. So also putting a cargo barrier in there and things like top shelves and dividing barriers, just like I did in my GU Patrol, it does limit the functionality of the car and it really makes it into a dedicated tourer and uh, it's really not that uh, useful on a day-to-day -day basis when you wanna go to the shops or buy some big bulky items that you wanna stick in the back of your car. So you see some of these tourers these days and they've got drawers stacked up to the roof, they've got tables, slots, pockets, bags, everything fits into a place and look, they really, really are great for your touring uh, trips. However, it's not something I can afford to do with this car and this car is still our daily driver and I need it to be nice and functional for both the touring trips and also for our life at home with things we need to stick in the back as well. So although those are great, those big storage solutions, they don't leave much room for anything else and it's not something I was looking for in this vehicle. So the other reason I like these set of drawers is that the fact that this fridge and fridge box can be removed and a false floor inset was made up with the drawers to fit in in the spot there so it has a nice false floor across the whole back of the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a timer and we're going to remove all of this gear here and put that floor in and you'll see how quick and easy it actually is. 
And just note this bridge is tied down and plugged in as if we're going on for a trip. So uh, let's get to that and see how long it takes. So just like that, in less than a minute and a half, we've got that fridge removed, the top box taken out, and there's false floor installed on the bottom here. So this means that now we've got this large area still functional for that day-to-day -day driving. So taking out that fridge box is super easy. There are four small clips on each corner that can uh, secure it down to the drawer system itself, undoing those four clips and removing it, and it's simple as that. So now with that fridge box removed, it's a really good time to have a look at how the wiring works behind the fridge. So one of the big issues that come with fridge slides is the wiring. So when you move that in and out, obviously the wiring has to have enough slack in it to move with the slide and with the fridge, but then it often gets tangled up, caught up, or jammed in the rollers. But here we've got uh, custom have used a cable chain system that make it very easy and mean that your wires are never gonna get caught up behind your fridge again. So once you uh, push this in, that cable chain will hold that wire above the drawer system itself making sure it doesn't get caught on anything on the way in and the same for the way out. So that cable chain there is fastened to a bracket here which holds the receiving plug for your fridge. So in this case we've gone in for a screwing type fitting so this fitting will never ever come out on those corrugated roads and that uh, means the fridge is always going to be nice and cool when you rock up to camp. So the great thing that custom installations use on their drawers are these rails here. So these are to tie down the fridge but they are fully adjustable at any point along the rail. So it's simply Pulling, out, pulling up this uh, metal bracket here, and these can be removed and be placed in at any point during the system. They lock into place, so they move side to side, and they're nice and strong there to hold down your fridge. So perhaps one of the handiest features on those drawers, and one of the things that really attracted me to this brand of drawers, is the table that folds out underneath here from the fridge slide. So you can pull out this fridge slide here, then you can pull out another slide, which is a table that you can work on while you're at camp. And uh, look, it's fairly strong. It does have a drop down log leg here. It's simply drop down, adjust it to high quickly. And they've got a nice tough table here for doing all your camping and cooking on. So this here has come in extremely handy for our trips. And even on our short trips with the family of four, we actually don't take a table now for a weekend. A trip will just use this. It is cramped, but it does work. And it saves us having to carry a table in the back of the car. So this leg here is just a telescopic adjustable leg. You tighten up with this wing nut here and then there's a small magnet on the bottom of the table here, leg just sticks to. So the only thing that I've had to add for these custom installation drawers are these panels here. So as you can see, and we'll go into detail in a minute, there's some electrics on the front uh, side wing panel here, and these electrics all sit back here. Now to avoid things like your vehicle jacks and other bits and pieces you've got in the back section here coming forward and hitting that, there's nothing here stopping that from custom. So I've just got a piece of plywood here, cut it out to shape, and then used a couple of L brackets on the back here to support that in place. So if anything does come backwards, it's gonna hit that, and it's not gonna hit all the wiring and keep that all safe in here. So when sitting at the back of this cruiser, I wanted to make sure I set the electrics properly the first time. So I had a very clear idea in my head about what I wanted. And when I went to Chris about the idea for the drawers, I actually came to him with the designs for these wing kits here. And he cut out these panels and put in these accessories uh, as I requested. And they work really, really well. So let's go into detail on each side about what I've got going there and how it all works. So we'll start here on the passenger side of the car. So up the top here, the first thing you'll notice is this Victron battery monitor. So it's a dual battery monitor that'll tell you the voltage of both the batteries. It'll also tell you the amps coming in or going out, as well as the watts, uh, how many amp hours have been discharged from the battery at present, and the percentage of charge of the battery, along with your time remaining. So this is also a Bluetooth monitor and we'll hook up with an app on the phone and it'll give you all that detail as well. Moving on to the panel below it, we do have two rocker switches here. These are just simple on off switches and they control the lights on the side of the roof rack uh, on both the passenger side and the driver's sides. Underneath that, we have four USB ports on these two top ones here and then two 12 volt cigarette plugs. 
Okay, so I've just plugged in these basic battery monitors here. Uh, you've got the left one here connected to your left 12 volt plug and the right one to the right. Now, as you'll notice, they are significantly different in their voltages. We've got the one reading 12.7 to 12.8, which corroborates with the Victron battery monitor and the other one here on the right reading 14.1. The reason it does that is I have put in a voltage converter in behind this panel here, which converts that 12.8 volts to 14.1. Now the reason I've done that is so I can charge my DJI Mavic Pro drone batteries. For some reason, the car charger, the 12 volt charger that comes with the drones, only charges of a voltage above 13.2. So that's fine when the car's running, you will be able to charge your batteries, but as soon as you stopped or up at camp, you're not gonna be able to charge your DJI batteries off that 12 volt. And you can see here, the, all the electrics here are buttoned up quite nicely. They all run into a single line of conduit down to the back of the drawers and into the uh, engine bay and the BCDC. This metal silver box you can see here is that voltage converter I was just talking about. And this here is the switch that I've installed on a panel that I've made up. Uh, to control that voltage converter. So turning this switch on and off will control power to that right 12 volt plug. Okay, so moving on to the electrics on the driver's side of the car. So this panel here is up dedicated to the air control systems on the car. So up the top here we have a dual PSI gauge and this relates to the two airbags that are in the rear suspension of the vehicle. Now underneath that I have two paddle switches um, which uh, control the pressure inside these bags through the air compressor. Underneath that, we've got a blank switch here, which doesn't currently do anything. Um, it's just a switch I had to fill in order to complete this panel, and uh, it gives me the ability to add something in the future if I choose to do so. And then next to that, we have the air compressor switch. So the way in which I've got the air compressor wired up is that it'll only turn on and fill the four liter air tank that's in the car while the engine's running. If I turn it on, it does nothing. However, I can inflate these airbags while the engine is off, and the compressor will cut in I uh, will start up and just do enough to inflate the bags. So to inflate the airbags on this car in the rear suspension is simple as just lifting up these paddle switches. And that will activate the ARB twin compressor and uh, pump up those airbags. And the same here to do the reverse in order to lower that airbag back down, just a matter of So this here is gonna be one of my favorite modifications for the vehicle. Being a family that tow a van and we're frequently off grid and towing off road, this gives us the ability to adjust the suspension on the vehicle, both when hooked up to the van and driving around without the van, very quickly and very easily, and uh, makes our life a lot easier. And it's something that I definitely uh, looked forward to planning to putting into this rear drawer system. So obviously at the bottom of this here, we do have the normal ARB outlet. Now one of the advantages to having this at the rear of the car is that I have uh, tested it and this does reach all four wheels on the van as, long as, as well as all four wheels on the car. So one standard ARB hose kit will pump up all eight tires on our setup. So one of the real handy parts about the 200 series is the amount of space behind these plastics in the rear cargo area here. So ARB have come up with a bracket design. They've managed to fit an ARB twin air compressor inside these plastics. Now I'm a big fan of having hard mounted air compressors. So this worked out really, really well in my application. And not only is it the big ARB twin compressor, but it also links up to a four liter air tank. Okay, so to finish up the electrics in the back of the, uh, the cruiser here, we have changed the factory lights to an LED globe. However, those who own these cars do know that that factory light in the back area is way too far forward and does not provide enough light here for a camping and touring setup. So we have had it added this small little LED light that pops into the real tailgate here. Now on the Sahara models, uh, this does piggyback straight onto the uh, switch here that controls the automatic tailgate. And that means that it's an extremely easy plug and play installation. And when I bought this unit, it came with the plastic and all the parts mounted along with the switch required, the plug, sorry, required to wire straight into the back of the switch there. So being wired into that factory switch is, it means a couple of things. First of all, it will turn off automatically after 15 minutes, so you can't forget to leave it on. But also when this tailgate is closed, that light will automatically turn off. And again, when you open a tailgate, it will automatically turn on. So there is a small little push button uh, switch there as well. So you can manually turn the light on and off. When it is on though, it is super bright and does light up this entire area very, very well. The other good thing about this is accidentally as well, when you do open the fridge in this particular setup, that light shines straight down into the fridge, meaning that you'll never have troubles finding that favorite beverage or the food required for your camping dinner. So 
Great little bit of kit there. I did actually source that off one of the 200 series at Land Cruiser Facebook forums. So if you're interested in getting one of them for yourselves, grab on, jump onto one of those forums, uh, search for the tailgate light, and I'm sure you'll find uh, who you need to speak to there. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's how we've set up at the back of our 200 series Land Cruiser. So. I know it's not for everybody, but this here works for us. These days, I think it's very easy to get carried away in setting up uh, excessive setups that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Whereas uh, you need to think about what you actually need and uh, for your style of camping and or touring, four wheel driving, whatever it is that you do. So this system here works perfectly for us. It's nice and simple. Um, the fact that we've incorporated those air controls definitely helps out when we tow our van. But it works for both touring on the road and also it's multifunctional for that purpose at home as well. We can remove the fridge, put that false floor in and still have a large storage space in the rear. In addition to that, it also works for both touring with or without the van, so we can chuck the tents on the roof, pack up this section here, and we don't have to take the van everywhere we go. So again, look, this system just works for us. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, giving you a few things to think about as well. If you have any questions, make sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at Exploring Oz. More than happy to uh, answer any questions or explain further any of the points that I've mentioned in today's video. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next time. So uh, thanks, guys.